I think well, let's jump in. So, John, yes. um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for doing this. I'm, My pleasure. Uh, where are you, by the way? I'm in Bryn Mawr. I'm outside Philly. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, is it, is it, what's it, I, I imagine it's the same here, but are you on complete lockdown like everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually we got the, uh, I have an 11 year old son and we got the news today that the year is over. Oh, okay. I think yeah. we've known that here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. We locked down before you guys did, but there was still this like, it's for two weeks. Now it's till the end of the month. And now it's today was the day we got done. Interesting. I'm not, I'm actually not certain when your uh, current, whether it's official or unofficial, but anyway, uh, so I, I should probably just fill everybody in on on just a little bit about who you are. Um, John uh, wrote a, a beautiful play called The Unrepeatable Moment, which was a series of short uh, plays that we did at, at uh, the Barrett Group, and uh, he has uh, he wrote a play Ephemera and Another Girl and Bruno Hauptmann Kissed My Forehead. Um, and a play eight minutes, 20 seconds, not to be confused with 17 minutes, which was produced at the Barrett Group. And as John pointed out to me before we started, he writes plays that are half the length. <laughs> Although I don't, that's not the length of the play, is it? No, no, certainly not. Okay. <laughs> um, but the most interesting thing in the bio, and I, I suppose many of you, if not all of you, got the bio in, in, in the invitation to the thing for our guests, but John is a writer on Arthur. And I was fascinated by that. And, um, and uh, you, you were saying it's a good gig, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's a great gig. You know, it's PBS, so the money's not great. Yeah. But um, it's actually great in the sense that, you know, it's just like I have a friend who I made there who now works for Disney, and he makes a lot of money, and he wants to kill everybody he works with. And on, on an eight, you know, and um, in Arthur, you love everybody you work with, and you don't make that much money. So that's, yeah. I, man, I gotta say, I, I, my, my kids are now, you know, 18 and 21, but when, uh, when they were little ones, Arthur was always a complete breath of fresh air. I was just... No, it's, and it's real. I mean, all these years in, like, they want the guy, you know, who, who, who it comes from, uh, uh, he cares about teaching still. Like, I mean, when we sat down, he was like, I, I want to do an episode where kids learn about what the jury system is. I want to teach one about the ear, how people hear. Do you know, like, he, it's, it's not, um, it's not uh, uh, just sort of covering, like, right. he really cares. Yeah. It matters. Yeah. And, it, and that pervades everything. It's so great. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, I, I thought it might be a good idea to go over uh, some of the classes that you're, you're teaching in, in uh, coming up and talk about, you know, what you'll be covering there, but also just, you know, what it's like teaching online. Uh, you mentioned to me that you've been teaching online for now a couple of years, is that? I, you know, I, I, I blazed the trail for the Barrow Group for teaching online. I taught the first online class of the Barrow Group. Awesome. And it, it's, to, it's to your, I mean, it's uh, to your credit that when I went to Farah and I said, you know, I think this would actually work online. And she, first she said, we don't do online classes. And then she said, but we could. And it was like that fast, so, you know. Amazing. Well, um, let, let's go over some of the some of the classes you're, you're going to be offering. Right. Um, you, you you have a upcoming as a writing for TV one and two, and mm -hmm. uh, what do you what do you cover in those classes? Well, my writing, my teaching of TV writing really comes from it's an exact reaction to a god awful TV class that I took when I was studying. Um, I took a class in which you were supposed to come up with a pilot in twelve weeks, which, if you know anything about writing pilots, is absolutely insane. It's like telling someone to write a novel in 12 weeks. Do you know, like with no, it's just, it, it may actually even be harder than that. Um, and so I saw all these people who ha were really enthusiastic, these sort of smart, funny, interesting people with these good ideas. And I just saw them drive into ditches over and over again because they didn't do the prep work that needed to get done to write a pilot. Right. So when I approached it, now you guys did it in 10 weeks, I thought, well, I'll do 10 weeks to get a beat sheet, which is sort of the major turning points. Okay. of the story it's sort of a it's a it's extensive outline of the story uh -huh. and believe me that's plenty of work for 10 weeks yeah and then the writing for tv2 is you write the pilot oh fantastic so it's 10 weeks to get the the beat sheet because if you get the beat sheet right yeah writing the pilot is relatively easy now right. that said of course you know nothing ever goes right but you know like you know that's the theory anyway yeah and how does it uh i met 
I mean, I've been doing some teaching online since this all started. Mm -hmm. And I found that any classes that had to do with writing, actually, it, I, I get it. It was a very smooth interface. It is. Um, it's not. Uh, how does it, does, I mean, I have a logistical question about it, which is when people write things, how, how do they share it? Do they, in Zoom, do they use the share screen function? Yeah, we just use share screen. I mean, they can send it to me and I can share screen or they can share screen themselves. It's really, it's, there's really, no, as long as your internet connection is good, the only thing that is bad, if you have a spotty internet connection, mm -hmm. that can sort of, but other than that, I mean, it's like I teach at Temple and at Drexel here in Philly, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm on all these meetings now with all these people who are teaching Zoom for the first time. Yeah. And there's all these complaints. I'm like, I'm a writing teacher, man. This is easy. Like teaching online writing is not, it's really not that hard. I would prefer to be in the room just because I, I prefer the intimacy of that. Yeah. But the, the, the loss is pretty minimal. What percentage of uh, your, your, those classes, because I know that when, when we have uh, personal setups that you have a writing for, you know, when, when the space is open and, mm -hmm. and stuff and all this passes, I know that you sometimes offer writing for actors. Mm -hmm. But my question really was that in these classes, how many of the your your participants or the the writers are actors who just are exploring writing? Most, most. I mean, not when I teach the university classes, it's it's very different. Yeah. Um, but at Barrow Group, certainly. But you know, I'll, almost everybody in theater starts out as an actor. I mean, I started out as an actor. You so, did. Oh yeah, yeah. How long did you? That's last where writing for actors came from. So yeah. How long did you last doing that? Well, it depends on when, when you define the plug being pulled. Do you know? That tends to be kind of a vague thing. Um, <laughs> I quickly realized that I was much better writer than I was an actor. And the world uh, showed me that they agreed. Uh, so, so, I started, so I was briefly a writer-actor. And then I was just like, actually, it actually came down to a moment. I got cast in a production of Cat on the Hot Tin Roof up in New Hampshire. And I couldn't decide whether or not to take it because it was like 200 bucks a week or something. And I decided I was going to take it because then when it was running, I could write all day. Oh, yeah. And my girlfriend said at the time said, um, well, if you want to write all day, why are you going off to act? And that was it. That was the moment I was like, oh, yeah, right. Oh, right. I guess I'm just a writer now. So. Yeah. But I, I understand that notion of writing. I, 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 uh, my acting book was actually written when I was on an acting gig. Uh, and right. Because once you're, once, you're, once you're doing it. You got your days free. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It's kind of fascinating. Um, what, do you, what do you do in the um, playwriting intensive? How, how well, that's that a new class, mm -hmm. you know? So I've done right. And I just, because I've had a bunch of people who took writing for actors, and mm -hmm. then they wanted to sort of move on. Writing for actors is just sort of a transitional class for people who are acting and try to give them the tools to write, which I, part of the point of the class is that there's a great overlap in that Venn diagram of acting and writing. Mm -hmm. more than people usually recognize. Mm -hmm. So it was really about getting people writing. And so uh, I was, the idea is just sort of an, an, an open door policy to people who are either, you, know, you could be neck deep in something, you've been writing for two years, or you could have a bunch of scenes. And the idea is to just keep things going. And, 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 and in my experience um, with writing workshops, mm -hmm. uh, you need to teach as necessary. Like sometimes it's just everybody brings in writing and that's great. And then we talk about it. And other times it's like, you know, you need, you need to do an exercise there. You, you, you see a need in the class for something that maybe would help them about endings or middles or character development or dialogue or whatever. And so you, you do that as, as you see it's needed. How, um, I, I my mind jumped, I just noticed something in your bio and my mind jumped <laughs> to something else, which was sure. about um, where uh, the short plays that you've written and, mm -hmm. and John, just so everybody knows, John has written a number of short plays and they're great. And he has written easily one of my all time favorite short plays. It, it, it's right at the top of the list called The Low Lying Fog, which I had the pleasure of acting in at one point. That's, that's how we met. Uh, that's right. And, yeah. and uh, oh my God, it's a beautiful play. It is just a beautiful, beautiful. And my question and somebody was, else who's here acted in it too. Oh, like who's that? Yeah. Oh, is that right? Hey, yeah. Michael. Yeah. I can see that you're here. Um, yeah, Michael was brilliant in it. Um, um, I think we played the same part. Yes, actually. you did. <laughs> and you're both wonderful. <laughs> um, 
That's, that may be the, the only time that Mike Giese and I play the same part. I love that. <laughs> um, the, uh, um, but anyway, uh, what I was going to ask is about short plays. Mm -hmm. how, how does, wh what is the life of those? In other words, once you write it, mm -hmm. uh, do these things get published in uh, anthologies or how, how do they go out into the world? Well, it's funny, you know, uh, it's part of the reason why I don't write as many short plays as I used to, um, mm -hmm. because there's not a, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to get it read or produced, but in terms of it sort of having a life, do you mm -hmm. know the way a full length does? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's harder. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of easier to get in the door, but it's harder once you're in the door to sort of do anything with that. Yeah. Um, so I stopped for a while, but I have to tell you, actually, I sort of come full circle about it. I, I've gotten to the point, I guess it's age or something, but like, I just care less and less. I care less about my career than I used to. Yeah. And I care more about just doing whatever the hell I want. Cause you know, once you get to 50, you're like, you know, you only got so many years, so just do whatever the hell you want. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> um, so I'm just like, so I'm starting to think that I should write some short plays because they're, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. Uh, the fullness of concentration it requires, do you know? Yeah. They're always wonder, about one You know, it's so funny going through what we're going through right now. It seems to me there must be an entire world of opportunity in terms oh, of- Oh yeah, totally. Bad. Well, it's funny, I'm teaching a class right now and I'm teaching one of my all time favorite plays that I scheduled to teach this before the pandemic, which is One Flea Spare. I don't know if you know that play, mm -hmm. which I think is an absolutely breathtakingly stunning play. Mm -hmm. And it's in a quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, indeed. It, um, wow. Um, I, the only other thing that I wanted to cover before I, we move on to talking with Mark and stuff, and then I'll get you both in on a conversation together, but was about the, your relationship artistically with the Barrow Group and our, our whole pr approach and what you know of it and mm -hmm. how, it, how it meets up with writing. Um, where, where do you see overlap and, and ways in which uh, I, the reason I'm asking is that a lot of people who are in on this meeting today have spent uh, time with us and, and yeah. exposed to a lot of different program we have. And where do you see the the intersection and to describe your to use your word the, the, in the Venn diagram? Where do these worlds overlap? Well, I think there's some in acting in general, but it's better in good actors. And you guys tend to produce good actors because <laughs> you're a good training program. And it has to do with um, an ability to feel from within a character in a moment. Do you know, I do this exercise where it's about sort of taking from a monologue and then doing more, do you know? And sort of, it, it has to do with uh, a lot of the joy of writing plays is, is basically being other people, right? Yeah. You get to take somebody else's view and that's what actors do. Mm -hmm. And your actors are very um, moment to moment. They're very spontaneous. They're very, so, that's a wonderful way. It keeps you away from uh, cliche. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's like I, you know, I said, only in bad art are sad people always sad and happy people always happy. And you know, like, and your actors tend to be very um, attuned to that, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. making a joke in the saddest moment of your life. Like, do you know what I mean? And, I do, and I do. It's funny, it comes up, you know, one of the, we're, I was just talking about this, I was teaching a master class last night and I was, it came up, we were talking about how, you know, for me, all material, all of life is serial comic. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And and I think that it's funny how how actors and often will have a tendency for whatever reason, a desire even, to sort of want to go. Oh, I I think I know what that is, and sort of lock in on whatever it is that they think something is. Right. And and uh, when I think our entire philosophy is built in part on releasing that hole. Yeah. So that you actually don't know anything. You find out as you play. Uh, and, that's, and, that's, and that's always so much more interesting. Yes. I mean, I, I, had, I had a friend whose uh, husband left her and revealed this affair. And before she got angry, the first thought she had was totally neutral. was like, wow, I never thought I'd do that. Like not no anger, no, do you know? And it's like, in real life, it's always surprising. Do you know, yeah. and then comes rage and sadness and et cetera, et cetera. But the first it it, it is, you know, it's funny when wow. I, I, on my honeymoon, I went on my honeymoon in 1997 and I, it was eventful in that I contract, it was eventful in many ways, but I, I contracted uh, 
malaria and acute amoebic dysentery at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, I definitely almost died. And I remember when I was in this sort of delirious state, at one point looking over at Lee, my wife, and, 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 and realizing, oh, this could be it. And I, a bunch of things went through my, my mind. I, I actually clocked that I'm not feeling any grief right now. Yeah. Um, and then I realized, and that was immediately followed by a thought of like, oh yeah, I'm way too sick to feel grief. I mean, when you're that sick, it's like everything. But I, I think there's just other things. It's like, I was, I was downtown on 9-11. I was a couple blocks when the Trade Center fell. And I remember having the thought in my head, and again, there was no fear involved with it. The actual, I said, I, I thought, I wonder if this is the period on my sentence. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And not like, oh God, I'm going to die. And, you know, yeah, it's, like, always, it's, it's always unexpected, isn't it? I, I once, the, another eventful thing in my life was I, I was in a car that uh, had all of my belongings in it because I was, I was moving. And uh, it caught fire and it burnt to a crisp. And I lost, oh, I lost everything. <laughs> and in the middle of the burn, when we were watching it, I was just laughing hysterically. Ah, thanks, of and, course. And I never, I never thought funny. like, if I thought, funny, everything you own is burning. It's hilarious. If, if I saw that in a script, I don't think I would have said like, I, I'm going to laugh hysterically. It was just, it just happened. Yeah. Um, wow. Anyway, um, well, I'm really excited on many fronts that you're offering these classes during this time. And um, I'm also excited that you have all this experience doing it online. I guess you're, you're the vet in our, in our setup yeah. anyway. Yeah. And uh, um, in, a little, in a few moments, we'll open this to a Q&A and people mm -hmm. may or may not have questions for you. But uh, I, I thanks for taking whatever time you've taken so oh, far. Oh, my pleasure. You guys are the best. I'll do anything you guys ask. That's so sweet. Um, and I'm going to just flip it over to Mark right now and introduce. Uh, so this is Mark Grenier, everybody. And uh, uh, sitting there in the baseball cap and the sort of 40s winged chair. <laughs> yeah, I tried to find the most regal you that's, know, that's backdrop. Good. I'll, I'll call you Emperor Mark. That works. And, okay, that works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Mark uh, teaches a number of things w with us. He, um, when we have classes in in person, he teaches our. He basically is the our veteran on, on the improv uh, scene. He teaches our improv programming in the vast majority of it. Anyway, um, I uh, met Mark first. Actually, I think first. Maybe you were a student in, in uh, yep. some of our classes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also have a background in improv. And when I found out Mark was an improviser, I immediately felt a kinship. And, and, uh, and it, it turned out he was a fantastic teacher. And we, you know, we have a whole teacher training thing that we go through. And, and uh, it was, that was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing improv for a while. We're in the process of trying to figure out how to do that online. Yeah. Is, that a, is that an <laughs> apt description? Yeah, that's that that that's what it is. It's a process figuring out what games translate easily and we productively. Were, before we were going, we thought we said let's do zip zaps up and so I'm looking at that <laughs> game. It's a very it simple work. game. You know, you <laughs> point to somebody and go zip, and then you go yeah. zap and stuff like that. So you know, I, I pointed to it and went <laughs> zip, and I realized, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you would have no idea who you were pointing to. So right. <laughs> you see people screaming random mm -hmm. words, right? Uh, <laughs> Which is entertaining. It's its own entertainment. <laughs> For the people doing it, yeah. Right. Um, actually, I think it might be entertaining just to how much of a hot mess it would be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes the where the humor comes from in improv is just the mess of it all. Oh my God, yes. Um, I used to be a pianist at the comedy store in LA on the Sunset Strip and back in, this is in 1980 or so. And um, I played at a group that played right before or after, depending on the night, this group called the Comedy Store Players. The Comedy Store Players was a, a group that had Robin Williams and <laughs> Jim Stahl and Terry McGovern and just a, this Mark Summers, I think, was in it. Who's Improv a legend. Yeah. And um, it, was, uh, it was certainly most inspired when things got completely off the rails. It, right. It <laughs> very interesting. Anyway, um, just to get to your classes that you're teaching, um, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be... Uh, teaching a beginning three class for film and TV. Right. And what, what's, uh, how's that class structured? What, what's, uh... So that's a continuation of the beginners acting classes uh, that we offer at the Barrow Group. Um, I sometimes teach beginners one, beginners two, and then with beginners three, um, the school offers different options. Um, so this will be a film and TV option. 
Uh, it'll be a six week class. So they'll be continuing all of the tools and concepts that students learn in the beginners one and two classes. But then we start to dive in and uh, dive into on camera work. Mm -hmm. um, so the first week we just we'll do some exercises just to get our feet wet with it. We'll review uh, script analysis, but uh, we'll be applying it to film and TV scripts, um, watching clips, you know, just talking about the creative and you know technical differences that come up when you're working on camera. Uh, and then the rest, yep. Oh no, go ahead. Well, then the rest of the class will be doing uh, scene work, um, you know, on camera, and you know, adapting it to you know the Zoom medium. So uh, we won't have the benefit of being able to do wide shots with you know both actors in it. But um, the nice thing with Zoom is it's it's on camera, right? So it kind of translates in a lot of ways with medium shots and close ups and working with continuity and all that, all of that. It, it, you know, that is, I have to say that I found that to be amazing. I'm amazed at the extent to which it emulates film. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're so close. In, yeah. in, in my scene, you know, when we were first looking at doing scene study classes online, we were like, how on earth are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. And then we started to experiment and, and found uh, ways of doing it. And it actually has been just remarkably interesting and valuable uh because we're getting to watch it so close you know right so yeah um mm -hmm. which is that that's kind of fascinating um let me see what other classes that you got coming in oh it's it says you got a teen screenwriting class that's right yeah so uh uh i've taught this before at the barrow group and um it's just always so much fun um it's inspiring every week because teenagers are random i mean it's 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 a it's i'm always just blown away by the ideas that they come in with yeah. um so yeah that'll be a a four week class in um screenwriting so we'll go over you know format and structure and story structure and all of that but we'll dive in in the first class with games and exercises just to get the students writing and then you know every week they they'll be bringing in their uh their writing and we'll workshop it and read it in class and how long, um, yeah. generally, how long are the pieces that, that they'll write for screen? Uh, do they tend to be all shorts or, or, or webisodes? Yeah, they, te they tend to be shorts generally, but um, I don't, uh, the, 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 the class is open to kind of any level. So um, in the past, it's worked really well having people who have never written before uh, or people who have, you know, written. Um, and um, once we dive in, whatever people want to work on. So I had a student last year when I taught this who really wanted to write a TV pilot. Um, and so we, we talked through that and he uh, decided to write it as a web series. And so he was writing like 10 minute, 10 to 12 minute episodes every mm -hmm. week. Um, whereas other students kind of just wanted to, you know, work on just something new every week and find like new inspiration. And will they will they sometimes actually take the step to in some form make it and actually you know shoot something? Yeah, I had one student who um, who made uh, made the short, um, and I had uh, uh, several students who then had we got adults to read uh, yeah. the scripts that they had written, so they they got to sort of watch actors um, play the scripts, um, which was really fun for them. That's fantastic, amazing. And then, uh, yeah, we have a new class that's uh, f for sketch comedy writing. That's right, yeah. So this was to kind of uh, take the place of an improv class for right now for people who want to, you know, explore more of the comedic side of yeah. things. So it'll be a four week sketch writing class. <laughs> yeah. What's the, uh, I'm gonna ask you a, a stupid question, but uh -huh. what are some of the, if, or any of the sort of differences between you know normal writing and when you're writing for a sketch? Are, are there any sort of central precepts or anything? Um, well, I mean, it, it, it really does follow like story structure as the Barrow group uh, teaches it. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a particular form of that where it's, you know, the emphasis is, is on the, you know, the comedic kind of idea or premise that's central to it. Um, but in, in other respects, it's, it, it models story structure. And whenever I look at sketches or review sketches that I love, um, you know, this, when they work, the story structure lines up beautifully. It yeah. just plays out in a, a bit of a different way because of the, you know, the comedic, you yeah. know, uh, necessity. It, it's funny, you know, I, I, I think of, I, my mind just went to, uh, there's a Simpsons episode 
where they were, uh, it was, I think it was written by Conan O'Brien, I'm not sure, but they were spoofing SNL. Uh -huh. You know, the character Krusty the Clown ends mm -hmm. up having to uh, try to rebuild his career and then he goes on SNL. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they have a sketch. And this, this is relevant to what you were just talking about story structure because sometimes because of the speed in which SNL is created, they end up kind of putting stuff up that actually doesn't have right. a fully you know, so <laughs> my recollection of that episode, he comes in and, and it says, you know, and now the big ear people. And then it's just like this thing and, and it's just crusty the clown with these huge ears. And he mm. goes like, I can't hear you or something like that. <laughs> and, and, and nobody yeah. laughed. And he yeah. goes, ah, <laughs> I got 10 more minutes of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a good crusty um, uh, impression, by the well, way. Well, I, I would give that a three out of ten, but uh, okay. I, can do better, I can do better if I think about it. But anyway, um, okay. <laughs> so um, I, I think at this point, this might be a great time to just open it up to Q&A for everybody. And um, so if anybody has any questions, this is the time to use the uh, participant button. And basically, you just, you know, hi highlight your name and then, or, or when that, screen opens up, you'll see the thing that says raise hand and you can raise your hand. And uh, while, while we're waiting for hands to be raised, oh, and just once again, so everybody knows, once your hand is raised, uh, I will see it and I'll call on you. And at that point you can unmute and uh, turn on your video and then ask any questions for either John or Mark or myself. Um, while, uh, while we're doing that, I, I'm gonna chat with these things as I wait for hands to come up. Um, and Blair, who's monitoring, if you happen to notice some hands that I don't, certainly let me know. Um, John, I was curious, do you have a background in improv at all? Oh, you're muted. I don't know if you can hear me, John, but your, your, your microphone is muted. <laughs> oh, oh uh, she has to unmute me. Did she? Oh, hi. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, hi. Um, I was thinking when you were talking about sketch because it's something that comes up in my playwriting classes. Um, the rule of there is no hard and fast rule between sketch and play. You know, these, there's, it's not a lot. But the general rule of thumb is uh, sketch is about situation and play is about character. Oh, interesting. That a play reveals the character, whereas the sketch is about the situation. Right? You don't. You don't. The character doesn't get revealed, whereas a play character gets revealed. That's oh, so interesting. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that has a lot of food for thought for me on that. Um, and, uh, and then Mark, I'm going to ask you the, mm -hmm. the flip side question. Yeah. Is, um, did, did you have a background outside of comedy writing? Do you have any kind of background in playwriting or screenwriting that, that was straight ahead? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I went to school for filmmaking and screenwriting. So I have a background in that. And that wasn't explicitly for comedy. So I, you know, wrote, written sort of scripts, uh, film scripts and TV scripts that are kind of all over the place genre wise. But I always find myself going back to comedy. It just is a really, it's a, you know, it's a, an area that brings me a lot of joy. And in, in, in film school, do they require you to, through the course of your training to uh, write a full length, you know, feature film or, or is there any? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I ended up writing three features um, during that, the time that I was in that program. Wow. Um, which, you know, as John knows, is uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, and John, what about what it, I know I see in your bio, you know, you have all sorts of television writing things. Have you have you done film writing as well? Uh, early in my career, I was hired as a script doctor for New Line Cinema <laughs> and I was spectacularly fired. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. So, uh, the well, answer okay. is yes and Without no. mentioning names, can you tell <laughs> us the, 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 uh, some of the details of that? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, they were trying to be slippery with me, and uh, I sort of I ended up standing up for myself more than I really knew. But um, they were trying to get me money to do this thing, and they didn't want to put me in the union. So they were they were getting me to scab basically as a player, and I didn't really understand that. So they were kind of slippery about it. So I went and I took the contract they gave me and I sent it to the union and I got in the union and they got in big trouble. Um, apparently, uh, Bob O'Shea, is that his name? I can't remember. The guy who had New Line uh, threw a paperweight at someone's head as a result of what I did. Um, 
Wait, wait, well, wait a minute. What did you do that caused them to throw the ball? Well, party? they were hiring me illegally because I wasn't WGA. Oh, so, I said, oh. so I said to them, oh, you know, I'm making this amount of money. I think that gets me in the union. They're like, oh, we can't get you in the union this time, buddy. Don't worry about it. You know, next time, blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't trying to like to bring it to a head, but I thought, well, maybe they're wrong. I was in my 20s. I was like, maybe they're wrong. So I sent the, the contract they gave me to the union. They're like, oh, yeah, Whoa. yeah, you can get in. And then the union called them and, you know, got really mad at them. And somebody threw a paperweight at somebody's head and I got fired. Wow. <laughs> that is spectacular. It was. It was good. It was good. My first screenwriting job. Yeah. But uh, I'm, it's an interesting job. And, and I'm wondering if it might be fun for you to share some of the details of what a script doctor actually does. Like, how, how does it work? Well, I, I might, it was fairly short lived. So I don't know. That, um, but uh, my. My friend Aisha asked me, this is, this is the best question. She said, uh, do you ever get to, if you're the doctor, do you ever get to declare it dead? Like, do you ever get to come in and like pull your bloody smock and gloves off and be like, tried to save it, but <laughs> there was nothing. There was nothing. Yeah, you know, I mean, the stuff I did was basically, there's all these scripts that sort of work their way around in various forms that really no one's ever intending to make. Yeah. Uh, that it's a way of sort of funneling money to people that they want to fund and funnel money to. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you, you know, you, you work really hard on this and, and it's really for, for no reason because no one's ever going to make it. Wow. That's cool. That's well, you know, I've, I've been in what felt like uh, something like that. It, um, uh, there's a rafting term called a circulation. I don't know. Uh -huh. it's, <laughs> If you're in the rapids and it's basically a, uh, my understanding of it is it's sort of like a sideways whirlpool uh -huh. so, so there's a current that is going uh, up to the surface but then also uh, cycling around and going back and so if oh, you yeah. fall out in a rapid that's a circulation uh, then you know it can be very dangerous because if you try to surface um, you get pulled back under and uh, anyway, I was going to just say it feels like that sometimes when you're trying to get a script scene and, and something, you're just like in this thing that just is constantly being like, well, here's some notes and, and you know. Oh, it, it feels to me like I remember one time I, the, I had a, I got stuck on Verizon voice, yeah. you know, like the, the, the voicemail thing. The, the, yeah. And uh, um, it's one of the most maddening things is just new people keep appearing with new ideas. You yeah. don't know if you have, if there's somebody you have to pay attention to or not. Yeah. And if there are good ideas or bad ideas and like, are you allowed to decide that? And it's just, it's, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Um, I see that Michael Giese, uh, speak of the devil. We were just talking about you. <laughs> speak uh, of the Giese. Because you saw it, uh, saw that, um, <laughs> it, it, your hands raised. So Blair, if you can unmute Michael and Michael, if you can uh, turn on your, your camera and, and, uh, there you are. Hey man, Michael. Hi. Hey, hello, sir. And sir, you, hello. You, you are where, sir, where, where in the country are you? Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. Go Hawks, that's right. I'm repping today. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. That's Shannon Patterson next to him, uh, Michael's Hi. wife, and, and uh, uh, one of our extraordinary artists, teachers, actors, every director in our last- Have you guys gotten round. out of bed today? <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to go back to bed. <laughs> okay. They have two children. They've most definitely got out of bed today. Yeah, our door is closed. They're, they're quarantined from our children right we, now. we teach acting, but now we mm -hmm. teach sixth grade and kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So, what was your uh, question? Well, first, let me just say thank you for the kudos. And you're right, probably Seth, that we are unlikely to be going up for roles <laughs> <laughs> ever. Um, and in just John, the, uh, I'll echo what what uh, Seth said. A low lying frog. I mean, it makes it super easy as an actor when the writing is fantastic. So, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you could um, expand on. Um, the differences between the writing for actors and the, the playwriting intensive, um, how you approach those differently. Yeah, yeah uh, writing for actors is really, I, I developed that class because I, I saw a lot of people with a lot of writing talent who got super psyched out by writing. Mm -hmm. They would like, I would see people who would have these fantastic, you know, I would work with actors and my wife's an actor, like my best friends are actors. Like I, I, I love actors and, and I would see them with these fantastic ideas and they would talk about play. And then you'd be like, oh, why don't you write that? And they go, I, I, I'm not a writer, I can't, I can't, you know, this whole thing. And I'd be like, but that, what you're talking about is what it is, right? So it was sort of about bridging that to just get them writing. Whereas um, the player intensive is like, okay, now you're writing, let's make something. Let's really make something, you know, yeah. make a play, make whatever it's gonna be. 
Um, so yeah, it's just sort of the next step of that. Yeah. Thank you what, very much. What sort of, thanks, Michael. That's a great question. Great to see you. You too. Um, uh, <laughs> what, uh, um, John, what sort of exercises do you do to help prompt people to just write? Uh, there's a lot of things. I mean, it depends on what stage you're at. Uh, the exercises I like to do are, um, it's, it's a lot, I like to do a lot of in-class exercises mm -hmm. because I think it's really interesting when people are starting out, the work they do in class is better than the stuff that they do when they have like a week. And it's because they, they don't get in their head. You know, yeah. you give them a thing like two people meet. It either starts well and ends badly or starts badly and ends well. Go. Oh, yeah. Do you know? And you do that bit just because theater is always about change, right? Yeah. yeah. It's about things changing. And so you make that so that there's an engine of change and then just make people start doing that. And they'll, they'll you know, things like that. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Mark, how about you? Are there, yeah. um, oh wait, I see actually Barbara Rubio has a, has a question. And uh, Barbara, go ahead and unmute okay. yourself. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, and oh, feel free to turn off your video. Yeah, I'll too, turn please. on my video too. You guys are great. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, I'm a writer. I've done some acting in my life, but it's occurred to me, be interesting to see, maybe you could have writing, acting classes for writers. Turn it around. In other mm. words, what bring an interesting to idea. play with them yeah. as if we were acting in our plays. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we will kick that around for sure. Yeah, yeah that's okay. a great idea. I'm me. curious. Have you? Do you have a? Have, is that something that you've ever thought of before? Was it? Do you? Well, it's been coming up as I've been listening to your series. I, I turn it around because, mm -hmm. I, as a writer, I can get into my head. Mm -hmm. And I have my best moments when I become the character. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether there could be a, a class where we become our characters and mm -hmm. play around maybe Great idea. improvisationally or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so you can also, you can right. see. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was just like, I always tell people to speak the words out because what you'll see is often things that you write that seem beautiful written, when you have to say them, it's often right. too much. Right. right. You're ready to move on to the next thing. Yeah. And you've got yeah, one yeah. more line to say. Do you know? And that's something that you only learn from acting. Right. Yes. I, I, I've noticed the same thing. And when I write, I, same thing. I'll write something. I'll go like, oh, that seems cool. And then I'll say it out loud. I'll go, yeah, uh, yeah no. Cut it by half. That's what you want to do, right? Yeah. It becomes very different. That's usually just better spoken. What kind of stuff do you write, Barbara? Well, I'm in the middle of this fantastic play that I've been working on for years. <laughs> And um, I'm kind of afraid to put it out there because I don't want anyone to steal my ideas. Does that ever float around? Hmm. How does that work? Atmosphere? Excuse me? I'm, no, I'm curious for the writer of John, I'm curious huh? about that. Like, what, what, how does that work when you have an idea and you, you feel like there's, you're nervous about copyright infringement because it's, it's a special idea. Is there any kind of protection for that or how does it work? Well, there, there's, I mean, there's copyright, there's all these things, but I mean, I've, I've it, it, unless it's a really specific sort of high concept idea, I sort mm -hmm. of like, I, I both steal and have been stolen from. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm sort of like, it's all in the execution. I mean, mm -hmm. I get it, but for me, I just like, I, that's just one thing. I, that's one more thing than I can worry about. <laughs> you know? like, right. I just got to make it as good as I can. Right. You know? Well, I took one class and I realized in the class, because I came in, I went into the class paranoid and then I realized everyone is so involved with their own work. Yes. They don't really, you know, it's a little bit weird to think that they're all focusing on my work. They're just in love with their own work. Well, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's analogous to like, do you know when you're always worried about what somebody thinks about you? And the truth is they're not thinking about you. They're, not thinking. <laughs> they're, thinking, they're thinking about themselves. That's what everybody does, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Wow. In the middle of this, this uh, epidemic, that, that's such a... Uh, Depressing and interesting thought. Um, <laughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I just inhaled some down the wrong pipe. Um, well, believe it or not, that brings us to our, we're at the 45 minute mark and we, we need to close up, but I just wanted to really thank you guys for uh, coming in and kicking this off. This is our inaugural teacher interview. And uh, 
you know, I'm honored that you guys stepped in and uh, I, uh, I'm, of course, invite everybody to, if, if you know, you hearing about these things, what's your appetite at all, you know, you can go to barrelgroup.org and you'll see what classes we're offering right now online. Also know that we are offering a, a whole bunch of free programming along the lines of what we're doing now, pretty much weekly, uh, all through the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have events. Uh, on Mondays, we do uh, a town hall, which is just sort of a communal gathering for anybody um, to just sort of, you know, check in on a human scale in these times. On Tuesdays, we have a, a, a free acting class that's done on a first come first serve basis. And on Wednesdays, I have interviews with uh, artists. And uh, last time we had Corona Jagannath on coming up, we have Martin Moran. And uh, Thursdays, we're interviewing teachers. And on Fridays, we have sort of an open programming of something we're calling the Friday Special that uh, will be a, a sort of a potpourri of all sorts of artistic stuff. So uh, check out beargroup.org to find out all about that. And thank you so much for joining us today. I, uh, I wish I had time to like, so, you know, you know what we can do maybe for a second is everybody very quickly, if you're there, turn on your video just so we can yeah. see all. It's sometimes <laughs> nice to recognize that there is a community here. Look at this. This is just fantastic. <laughs> That's great. It is coming in and I, I can see the list of things. Wow, here you come. <laughs> it's getting populated. Look at all you beautiful people. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and, and there's still a, still a few that scammers are off. I mean, it, it's great. It's great to see you. I hope you're all well. Uh, take care of yourselves. It's been uh, so extraordinary going through this. I uh, feel like I should acknowledge that because I'm sure other people are going through this. I, I lost a couple of people this week um, to COVID and uh, many friends who are sick and many who are recovering. And that's good news. And uh, I'm, you know, it's just so big what we're all going through. So I, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you and that you exist and cannot wait to uh, give each one of you a hug in person, less than six feet away. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, thanks everybody. Have a great uh, day, week, and, and check out our programming and come and join in whenever you want to. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, John and Mark. Thank you. Thanks.